We saw Jimmy Johnson get, uh, uh, get black flag for passing below the yellow line. Jeffrey Bodine got black flag for passing below the yellow line. And explain why NASCAR, I mean, it's, it's a good rule. It's an out-of-bounds rule. I, you know, we, we didn't used to have that. And toward the end of the race, it was just totally amazing. The cars, it was just plumb off the racetrack down in the grass trying to pass people. And, uh, it was a safety thing. I think it was a, a great, great rule that, that they started policing that watching. There's a look at Rick Corelli driving the six truck. That's his number he had for a number of years here. Uh, he's a four-time winner in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, four poles. This year, that truck belongs to uh, Kevin and Delana Harvick. And they're planning on running full time. In fact, uh, Kevin Harvick told me this morning that they think they've got a sponsor. They won't have a truck decal or letter up today, but they think they'll be able to run the full season with the six truck. Amy, do you have more to add? Well, they're really excited down there right now under that last yellow. Rick radioed into crew chief Ed Baring. He said, I think this is the best the truck has run all week. And that's what's deceiving about Daytona. You can be bad in practice all week long, but your race truck may be what it takes to get to victory lane. And Rick Crawford's very confident right now. And there is Corelli in the middle of those two. Gunzelman in front of him, sets her behind him. Uh, Corelli, by the way, we mentioned Harvick, the owner. Kevin said he's going to drop some, maybe starting at Martinsville. He may put a couple other Winston Cup guys in some of his trucks to have some fun. And Mike Skinner, you know how much fun this really is. I'll tell you, I'm one of the guys that wants to drive that truck. Whoa, uh -oh, oh, we somebody's got problems sliding here. sideways up uh, out of, that's 99. That's Tim Fidua in the Jack Roush Racing uh, Ford. Fidua driving the second uh, truck out of the Jack Roush stable. And... He spun around, and of course, Timmy, a veteran driver. A lot of Bush series starts. Let's see if we can find out what happened to Timmy when we come back to Daytona as we work caution for the second time a day coming out on lap 22. Back at Daytona, Tim Fidua on pit road uh, bringing out caution number two on the day. The whole Michigan driver involved in an incident out of turn four. Let's see if we can see what happened. Watch the top of the screen there. Right at the top there, you see there was Timmy starting to turn around. He looked like he got a little help from a, from a blue and right truck. It might have been Donnie Neuenberger, but uh, I'm sure it was inadvertent. Timmy may have pushed off the corner, got in front of him, and, and there he is making some contact with the inside wall. And let's check in the pits with Amy for pit stops. Well, for the first time, the entire season of the NASCAR Truck Series, four tires can happen under yellow, and Robert Presley keeps taking advantage of that. Right side's on, now around to the left side. Ray Dunlap. Mike Bliss in, they make a wedge adjustment on the right rear, also a small track bar adjustment. It'll be four tires for these guys as the Bill Davis crew takes care of his service. When we come over here to the two, we see that Jason Leffler is also doing four tires over here. And we have a crash on pit road as Hornaday gets into it with number 50, John Wood. Hornaday stayed on the lead lap because of the caution that came out, but now another tough break in the pits as he makes contact. Now we see the front fender of the 50 there is going to have some damage on it, so John Wood will have to come back to pit road to get some service. And there's a look at the right front fender of that Navy uh, Ford for John Wood of contact, and obviously that will require some significant attention from the guys on pit road. They'll bring him back in, and a uh, tough break for John because obviously at these speeds, you got to have some aerodynamics. And uh, the 24 is still in, right? Well, really a good break for this caution coming out, Jerry, because Hornaday had gone down the lap, but he will stay on the lead lap. But uh, my question is, how much is this aerodynamic problem back on that left rear fender going to help? Or her, excuse me, maybe Mike or Phil can tell us they're going to have a good bit to repair there. And aerodynamics so critical here. Now, remember, Joe Rutman won this race a year ago after he had damage on his body. So can these guys fix it, and can they keep this truck competitive? I think they can. Where, the, where it's bent right there, it's, it, the air should it shouldn't hurt it too awfully bad right there. It's the front of the truck. You don't want to hit that too much. You know, last year he mentioned Rubman. Last year it was about the same spot on Rubman's truck, but it was on the right side, and he ended up winning the race. Let's see if we can see what happened here with the accident on pit road. I think John's truck is about the fourth truck on the, on the inside of pit road there. Watch. You see him pull out there. Hornaday's trying to get to his pit, and John pulls out and pulls right into the side of Hornaday. And that spins the uh, two-time series champion around. The Wolverine Chevy sits there. Now let's see from John Wood's point of view, the Navy onboard camera. There is Hornaday, and boom, hit him right in the R of Wolverine. It's a pretty good contact. The bad news from Ron Hornaday right now is they held him for a lap on pit road. And looking back from Musgrave's camera, you see the 24 be spinning, be spun there by the uh, 50. And see the 16 leaving. There's a two of Leffler making some evasive moves on pit road to get around Hornaday's truck park there. 
Back in the pits uh, is John Wood, right? Well, damage a lot worse than I thought it was, Jerry, when I first saw that uh, crash happen here on pit road because that right front fender really has a great deal of work to be done there. Now, they've got the hood back where it's in fairly good position, but that fender flaring out like that is going to have to be uh, fixed for sure. So they're going to need a couple of pit stops down here on pit road, I would imagine, to get this truck where John Wood can drive it. All right. So you guys can see, by the way, that all the crew members are wearing helmets. That's one of the uh, one of the changes this year from, from last year. NASCAR always has always a safety's number one priority, and the safety extends beyond just the cockpit and the trucks themselves to, to the crew. The crew's now wearing helmets for their protection. A lot of things being done here to try to make pit road as safe as possible. Well, I think it's a great idea, too. Even the NASCAR officials on pit road are wearing fireproof uniforms and helmets. All right, second caution flag today coming out on lap 22. The top five, well, they are chasing David Starr right now from Houston, Texas. We are back at Daytona under green flag just a moment ago. I'm Jerry Funch along with Phil Parsons and Mike Skinner. Ray Dunlap and Amy East covering the action on pit road. Glad to have you with us for our kickoff for the uh, 2002 NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series season. And there's the 24 truck. And you mentioned a moment ago the Wolverine Chevy for Hornaday was held a lap on pit road. Why? Because he took the caution flag right when those cars, when the truck spun off pit road, uh, turn number four. The caution was out. So when Ron, great, we saw him race. Uh, Robert Presley back to the line. That was actually after he had taken the caution flag, so he was not able to do that. So it was just a, a scoring correction to put him back one lap down where he belongs. He's now on the tail end of the lead lap. If he gets another caution flag, can come all the way back around, then he'll get his lap back. So actually the truck right behind him, as you watch Mike Wallace make a move by David Starr, here goes uh, Rubman with him. But the truck, the second truck in line there, the 46 truck, is the leader of the race. That is Dennis Setzer in the Axion Chevrolet. Behind him is... Mike Bliss in the IWX Chevrolet. Here's Robert Presley getting a little racy to the outside. Had a good run coming off of turn number four. The trucks were bunched up a little bit. He had a good run. Dennis Scepter saw that. He said, I'm going to use some of that draft Roberts, some of that air Roberts pushing. I'm going to get in front of him and take the lead. Keep the lead, but get by Ron Hornaday and put him back down one lap. And look at Bliss. He got shuffled out of the draft a little bit. Just, just, just a couple of inches one way or the other. Mike Skinner, and now you're suddenly from running in seconds. You're running about seven. You sure are. And, and you know, these trucks, they're, we keep talking about the hole they knock in the air, but uh, you got to go where that air is. If you don't get that, if you don't anticipate where that line is going. I know Phil talked about it earlier. You go high, you go low, you go in the middle, what do you do? You make the wrong decision, you can sure go backwards in a hurry. Well, both these drivers here running first and second will be in the Daytona 500. Here's the 14 truck, uh, the Rick Crawford machine, who uh, had problems a moment ago. Let's check in uh, and find out on pit road what's, what happened to the Crawford truck, guys. Well, Jerry, they had a flat right rear tire, and they came down to pit road to get that serviced, but after they had changed it, Rick went back out, and he found out that they have a brake line that is busted now. So with that brake line busted, he's going to have a lot of work to do to try to get that truck fixed. We've got many, many laps down. So if you just joined our coverage, the 14 truck here was hit from behind by uh, Coy Gibbs to bring out the caution flag on lap 14. That's where probably the damage came from. Lead change again up front. Two by two by two. Look at all the veterans up there. We've got Mike Wallace on the inside, Robert Presley on the outside. Behind them, Joe Rutman and Rick Corelli. Behind them, Mike Bliss and Terry Cook. All veterans up front. I, I think that was my prediction, was it not, Doc? All right, all right. I'll give you your due. Now, of course, the race is not over yet either, so... I'll pet, hey, and I also said I thought Mike Wallace would be a factor. I don't care if he had to start in the back of the pack, and here he is. By the way, Mike Wallace, I mentioned Mike Wallace and Robert Presley. Both will be in Sunday's Daytona 500. Wallace, who uh, was the 11th fastest car in qualifying last Sunday, will start 17th. And Robert Presley will start back in 31st spot after being the fourth fastest car in qualifying, in pole qualifying. I'm talking about the Daytona 500. Here comes Wallace back by Presley, attempting to. 